So here we have the new NVIM and the EC300. Both of these um, Ethernet CNC controllers are designed for Mac 3. Um, I've been working on porting Remora uh, to the NXP uh, RT1052 microprocessor, which is the, uh, the chip that's now in these new boards, and had some great success, and now to a point where uh, we need a simple way of being able to program these boards, um, which I'm pleased to say we've got a solution. And today I'm going to, in this video, take you through how we're going to convert a, uh, a simple ST-Link into what we call a DAP-Link, which will allow us to uh, do drag and drop programming onto these new controller boards. So uh, I'll take you through the process. So to make a DAP-Link to uh, program these new boards, uh, we're going to need two ST-Links. Um, these are uh, readily available on AliExpress for a few dollars each. Um, I've had various success with different vendors. Um, and these ones here, which are uh, at the bottom here, seems to be the, the one that I've had most success with, um, basically because they've got nice big pads to their programming. So, so inside these is uh, either a genuine STM32F103 or a clone. So both of these uh, STM30, um, ST links have clone chips on them. Uh, this one has had everything removed. This is a GE one, uh, so which is a Chinese manufacturer. So the reason I like these, uh, these ones, if we go to the back on this one, we've got really nice big um, uh, pads here to allow us to connect our um, header on to, uh, to allow us to reprogram them. Uh, these versions here have got these really tiny little uh, pads here and, uh, and they aren't marked. So I'd go for, uh, for this version uh, just because I know it works and it's really quite straightforward. So, so what I'm going to do is um, basically put our uh, programming cable onto um, our program port here and then we'll go through the, uh, the firmware uh, flashing process. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, so we've got an ST-Link connected to an ST-Link. Uh, now do ensure that you check the pinning when you do this because the pinning on this one is not the same as this one. So we just want to make sure that uh, we've got the clock and the SWDIO ground and 3.3 volts connected appropriately. So, so now we're going to plug this one into, into the computer and use the ST-Link utility. Okay, so we have the ST-Link uh, plugged into the computer and um, so now we can open up the STM32 ST-Link utility and then we can proceed to connect it to the target. And uh, so we've successfully connected and it's showing that it's uh, got an old ST-Link firmware there but we're, we're not concerned with the firmware on the, um, on the sacrificial ST-Link. You'll see here that, that you can actually see nothing. Uh, so firmware for the ST-Link is actually uh, protected. So we need to remove that protection so we can flash uh, the new DAP-Link uh, bootloader firmware onto the, um, the ST-Link. So we can do that by uh, using the option bytes here in ST-Link uh, utility. You'll see here that the readout protection is enabled. So if we, can, if we disable that and click apply, it's what it's basically done, it rewritten that option byte and basically erased the chip. So uh, we're in a position where we can uh, flash the firmware now. So um, I will just do a chip erase just to um, double check. Now, so on my GitHub, um, I've added the, uh, the DAP link firmware. Uh, so it's under, so under the Remora RT1052 um, repository, uh, which is the the, uh, the development repository for uh, for Remora for these new controller boards. There's a directory called DAPLINK, so if we go into that, and here you'll see um, two bin files. Uh, the first one here with the BL is the bootloader. Uh, this is what we want to flash using the ST-Link utility. The second one here is what we'll then drag onto the DAPLINK, uh, and this will give us the functionality to be able to flash to the, um, the Quad SPI uh, flash memory that's on these uh, new controller boards. So, so download that file and uh, we're going to, uh, to, to flash that onto the ST-Link. Uh, so we will open that file here. So we want the bootloader file, open that, and then we'll program and verify. So we've now successfully programmed the ST-Link into a DAP link. Uh, so we'll disconnect from the target and then we'll plug uh, the freshly programmed DAP link into the, uh, 
The computer and we'll show you what you should see when you when you plug it into the computer. Plug the DAP link from the ST link and then plug the, the new DAP link into, uh, into the computer. And the DAP link will show up as a mass storage device uh, with a drive name of maintenance. So when it's showing maintenance, it's showing that there's no, no interface firmware uh, loaded onto the DAP link. So this is the interface we then use to um, to then program we call the interface firmware onto the DAP link. So again in that repository that we showed is the second file. So we want to grab this, um, this second bin file and then we'll drag that. So here we have that at my local, uh, local copy so then we'll just grab this one and we can then drag that onto the DAP link. It'll copy on and then, as you saw, it um, basically programmed itself and reattached the computer with the new uh, interface firmware loaded. And you'll see here that it's actually changed the drive name. And this is a great way of actually to, to tell that we've been successful. So now we have a DAP link with interface firmware uh, that we can use to program the RT1052 uh, on these new uh, NVM and Digital Dream uh, controller boards. So I'll now take you through the two different ways we can use this new DAP link uh, adapter. So here we have the EC300 uh, controller board. Um, I've got it powered up just from a 24 volt uh, power supply. The reason for that is is that um, the programming header on the EC300 and the NVM doesn't actually uh, allow um, the the probe to supply 3.3 volts to the controller board. So. So we've got th um, just three pins connected, uh, so that's SWDIO, uh, the clock and the ground. Uh, I've also got a RS-232 to USB serial adapter connected. I'll, I'll take this opportunity to, to show you what uh, the Remora firmware does during its boot up sequence. A really great way to, to confirm that you know, the Remora firmware is, uh, is installed correctly and um, that it's up and running. So uh, we'll connect the, the DAP link up. And you can hear the computer beep in the background and the lights flash. So uh, it's come up on the computer as a uh, it's come up on the computer as a as a mass storage device. So the the first uh, way to use the uh, the DAP link is as a um, a debug probe, a DAP uh, debug probe. So we'll just get uh, MCU Expresso um, up. Okay, so here we have the. Um, in MCU Expresso, the, firm, the source for the firmware for, uh, for Remora for the RT1052, the, the new Nova Sun controller board. Uh, so we can then. So here you can see that um, Link Server has seen the new DAP link, um, and we can use that now for, um, for debugging um, and programming. So we'll let that uh, do its thing. Okay, so it's now connected to the target and is now programming. So it's programmed the, um, the flash memory on the board. And it's gone into debug mode. So you can see here the program has actually stopped in the main loop. Uh, real term here, um, listening to the, uh, the serial port. So we'll let the program run, and in real term you can see the output from the Remora firmware. It's uh, initialised the network uh, and then uh, gone into to idle state. So we can then uh, we should be able to connect with Linux CNC. Okay, so yeah, so we've successfully connected with Linux CNC and in the output on the serial we can see that uh, the control board has gone into running state. So that's um, 
you're all good put it over there and if we uh, you stop it you'll see that it's gone back into auto state so we've got good running firmware there um, using uh, a direct a debugging programming interface through MCU Expresso. The second way we can uh, use this controller board, so the second way we can use the DAP link, sorry, is uh, to um, as drag and drop. So let's just um, make a quick mod to this. Apply to YouTube. Okay, and here, rather than actually using uh, the debug, we'll just um, compile it. And then uh, we will create a bin file. Okay, so that's created a, a new bin file. So if we locate that binary file, so that binary file will be in our debug directory, and there's our file there that we've just created. And then uh, we can drag and drop that into our DAP link. You can see there that it was on the DAP link. The DAP link has reconnected and the file is not there, so the binary file has actually been flashed to the controller board. Now the DAP link does not um, reset the target, so we'll need to do a power cycle just to, um, to, uh, to re reboot it. And there we can see that we've uh, been successful in using drag and drop to uh, to reflash the uh, the uh, controller board. So that's um, basically the purpose of the video, just to show you how to, uh, to create a DAP link and then use the, the DAP link to program these new controller boards. So I hope you will find it useful and thank you for watching.